Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Andrew, and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So today is another monotonous build day on the pole house, or pole barn house, I should say. Uh, that back wall, what are we on, like part 432, I think, of the back balloon frame wall? <laughs> this thing is taking so much longer than I realized. So, um, we're going to keep plugging away at it. Today is all about blocking, except I have to do that blocking that you see at eight and four foot, I've got to do it at four, eight, and 12 foot on that back wall since it goes up to about 15 and a half feet as far as the lumber goes. So it's gonna be interesting. I've got a new tool. I know you're thinking, dang, this guy buys a lot of tools. Well, I need it for a house building. I'm gonna show that off. One of y'all suggested it. It's going to be awesome for building the next wall and we're gonna use it some today. We gotta to break that scaffold down and kind of get it set up to do all the work at different heights. And uh, it's just gonna be a lot of repetitious cutting and nailing in. Before we get started on the house, a lot of y'all have asked about how the grass is doing that I planted out here in the yard. I forgot to show that off in the last mowing video. So let me show you that real quick. So if y'all remember, this whole yard was tore up by all the concrete trucks and everything else that come in here. So I filled a lot of those spots in, planted some grass seed, and man, there's some spots that uh, I need to go scratch the surface again, but some of them are doing great. This was all dirt right here. Everything you're looking at right there is the grass seed that I planted. It has come up awesome. So good, look at all that. That is fresh, young, tender, new grass. That is not old grass. Kind of the same way over here. Take a look at this. This is all grass seed coming up here as well. So these spots are filling in and vanishing quick. Now I do have some spots like here. Of course, now I'm lying to you. I'm starting to see fresh grass seed coming up everywhere. We just got a rain. But then there's a spot like right here. This is kind of that hard packed clay sand mixture. So I'm probably going to have to scratch this up again and put a little more seed down. But everywhere else... Some spots are already almost vanished. There is so much fresh grass seed over in those spots, you can't even see them. I got a lot coming up right here. You remember all the sandy spots? I had one person tell me, hey, you're making your yard worse. Look, already almost gone. There is a ton of grass seed coming up over there. So before long, you won't even see none of this. Now I'm not gonna work any closer to the house as far as grass seed goes because I've still gotta get several more dump truck loads of this type of material because it packs and holds well. And uh, eventually we're going to pull that tan out and kind of fill all that in with the tractor with this more clay material. Because look right here what this sand does. Now I'm directing water here with the tin, no doubt. But it's washing out pretty bad. But even as long as this sand's been here, it does not pack well. It really doesn't. I don't trust this stuff, honestly. I mean, it's just still so loose. If this was that kind of clay material, it'd be hard as a rock and really hold itself together. So that'll be an upcoming episode. Some more dirt. Eventually we'll get all this in grass. But enough about grass. You're here for the house, right? So this is that blocking I was telling you about. You can see on the other wall, we got it at 4 foot, 8 foot. And uh, on this wall, we're going to get it at 12 foot. So let me get this scaffolding broke down. I'm still not sure exactly how I want to set it up just yet. I may have to set it up twice today to work at these different heights. But uh, that's okay. I think we definitely need to get the railing off for this job. Take that X-bracing off and kind of readjust everything. So that was far easier than I was thinking. I don't know why I told y'all in another video to take the door off to break it down. You absolutely don't. I think two to three minutes, I've got the railing off. Now I can go to adjusting how I want. All right, so here we are up top on the scaffolding. Figured let's go ahead and get the 12 foot blocking knocked out since that will be the most complicated blocking that we have. And at a certain point, we're gonna have one that's gonna be a little bit of a fit because blocking somewhere is gonna wind up going into these uh, metal braces that we have here, or straps, I should call them. 
So we'll have to figure that out. But the tool that I want to show you, I have to figure out exactly where 12 foot is on this post so I can pull a chalk line and snap it and then check out 12 foot on the other side. These posts are supposed to be exactly 12 feet. I've checked a lot of them with a the tape measure. They are very close. Actually, I think this one's like 12 feet and a 16th of an inch. I can live with that. This wind that we're dealing with right now is gonna blow my chalk line around more than a 16th of an inch on a post being off. So this is a tool that somebody suggested I get. This is a laser tape measure and they work awesome and are a lot more affordable than I realized. So you just turn the button on, as you can see, hopefully a camera picks that up. Uh, you now have a laser pointer and it is constantly changing measurements no matter where I point it. And then you can press and hold that button and lock your measurement in. And it reads from the exact back edge of this device right here. I've already tested that and thus far it seems very accurate. So if y'all remember in the episode whenever I built this wall right here, I was having a hard time. It was so windy like it is right now. Trying to drop a tape measure down and get an accurate measurement is blowing all over the place. I had to create that block to hang, uh, hang the tape measure underneath. Aggravating. Now I can simply make my mark on the post, butt the dead center back of this device up, shoot it down to the bottom plate, and it's giving me my measurements all the way down to a sixteenth of an inch. So, I already know what this post is. Let's check it out and see if this is accurate. All right, so I have the device turned on. I'm gonna butt this to the top of the post and shoot it right down to the concrete. Press and hold, and look at there, 12 foot even. I measured this with the tape and I'm guessing I got 12 foot a 16th of an inch. So if this thing is that accurate within a 16th, I can absolutely live with that. That is awesome. So I know I can really trust this thing. Uh, I'll check it periodically, but I, I doubt that it loses measurement. It probably either comes from the factory accurate or not. They promise uh, within an eighth of an inch up to 65 feet on this model. That's pretty accurate. So why did we just measure this? So the reason we just measured this is I want to make for sure this is exactly 12 feet because that is the dead center of a piece of sheathing. So if I lay a piece of sheathing straight up and down on this wall like this, there's eight foot. Um, but what I'm going to do is lay horizontal because everybody tells me there's a lot more strength laying horizontal. Well, it's four foot wide. So if I do four foot, four foot, there's eight foot, four foot again, there's 12 foot that's going to help me out with the blocking plus it's really going to make this wall strong and whenever you start getting wall studs that are 16 almost 16 foot tall they bow um they're not perfectly straight and that blocking really helps straighten the wall up so whenever you butt sheathing together on the outside it uh it has everything meeting up nicely now i don't expect this wall to be perfect doing it by myself the way that i did i'm probably gonna have to trim some sheathing that's just life with trying to build a house by yourself, but we're gonna do the best we can to make this accurate. And I have about convinced myself to lay that sheathing on the outside horizontal because I have said had so many people tell me that's the strongest way you could possibly lay it. So that's what we're gonna go with unless people start really arguing, go vertical. All right, so I just verified that that post is also 12 feet. So I know I can hang my chalk line across the top of that post. I've already stuck a nail in this side. I'll hang the line across the top of it and uh, pull it over here, snap it. Now we've got our 12 foot line. Okay, so you can see, maybe you can see by the camera, we have our chalk line snapped all the way across. Some lines are a bit light, but pretty easy to see by eye. So what I wanna do is just verify that that is exactly 12 foot down. It's very easy to do with this now. And I'm also thinking I can use this now to quickly shoot over and get my measurements. And I'm gonna double check everything with the tape measure. But this may really, really speed my process up on uh, figuring out blocking, stud length, everything else. So let's check. Twelve foot and one sixteenth of an inch to that line. It says exactly what that post was down there. 
12 foot 1 16th. So as of right now, at least down to the concrete, the line is exactly where we need it. I'm almost thinking we're going to double check this, that I can use this to quickly put inside the studs and figure my blocking out. This would be so much quicker and uh, less trouble than trying to hold a tape measure. So let's see here. Uh, we got our line perfectly where we want. So this one says 10 and 1 half inches. All right, the next one says 10 and 9 sixteenths, so within a sixteenth of each other. Let's double check that with the tape measure, though. This one said 10 and a half, and it is, oh, it's, it's right at 10 and a half. I would call it 10 and 7 sixteenths, but man, that's so close. This one was 10 and 9 sixteenths, and it's pretty much 10 and 9 sixteenths. Wow, this thing... This thing is that accurate. That is crazy. This is going to really speed my process up. It seems very accurate enough that I can trust it to kind of zoom through non-critical stuff like this. If I'm off a sixteenth of an inch, that's really no big deal. I can pull that up. All right, that's the other bad thing about these long studs. They twist on you too. You see this one's twisted pretty bad. So now that I've got that nailed in, I've got to pull over. That's where a clamp is without a doubt your best friend. can't get over how quick it is to put the scaffolding up and take it down. That's awesome. Let me tell y'all something. Whoa! Working 12 foot in the air, up and down scaffold, the simplest jobs take forever. So ready to get past this wall because it just doesn't look like I'm being productive, but I know I am. So here we are. So we've got the full top 12 foot run in. Oh, I'm telling you, that was a workout up and down and up and down. But I've got it level. I'm satisfied with it. We just snapped the chalk line for the eight footer. Then we've got to come down and do a four footer. But working on this scaffolding at this level, easy up and down, very comfortable. I think it's going to go a whole lot quicker. So we're about to throw this thing and fast forward and see if we can get these two runs knocked out. At least the eight foot run. We got to show Tiffany something when she gets home.
somebody suggested using the scaffold as a rolled around workbench. I think that is an excellent idea. So now as I work four foot down the wall, instead of dragging tools and everything along with me, I've got a rolling workbench to go. I know I talk about this a lot, but I love this scaffolding. It is just, it's just been amazing to help me out here on this job. Everything from a workbench to scaffolding itself. And I know when I get done with this house, I'm gonna use this stuff for storage and shelving in the shop. So it's just, it's cool, I love it. I've had to work so many bows in twisted wood today, it's crazy. There's been a lot of times up there that I'll have a clamp going one direction and a clamp going the other. I'm trying to get all this stuff straight as I can. Boy, it's been a long, long day. It's probably seven o'clock right now. I thought I was gonna be a hero and finish this out. I think it's time to call it an afternoon. So here's where we're at. We have got the 12 foot run done, the full eight foot run done. We've got the four foot run marked and we have started it. I uh, wound up getting a phone call from an old friend and kind of spend the last little bit chatting. Next thing I know, it is late. I think it's time to knock it out. I'll probably knock that out without recording it just so uh, y'all don't see so many blocking episodes, but we shall see. So what's next? I don't know if I'm gonna jump on this wall. I'm thinking I am kind of excited about it. Wanna get down there and get on something new, but we also have to trim out on the outside of that uh, metal truss. We have to do some board and trim there so the sheathing has something to attach to. So we're still not done with this wall even after I get that blocking done. It's just a lot to these monster walls right here. So much going on. So hopefully y'all have enjoyed this. I know it was another blocking episode, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. It's part of the house build. I want to try to include as much as I can. Hopefully y'all enjoyed that. I love that new laser measuring tool. I, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I forget the person that uh, suggested it to me. I can still see your thumbnail. I can see your face. I want to say it was something Rhodes maybe. We'll have to see, he'll comment back, but thank you for suggesting the laser measuring device. It's gonna be killer on that next wall, measuring out the studs. I found it to be very, very accurate today, and uh, I'm gonna use that so much more on so many other things in the house build and around the property, so I appreciate that. So we'll catch you on the next video. I don't know exactly what it'll be just yet. We have some other things coming up. I'm not gonna spill the beans, but uh, maybe some stuff with the storm shelter, I don't think I've already posted that before this and a few other things around the property. So appreciate y'all watching. Catch you on the next video.